Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up, my name is Glenn, and today we have for you a list of some of the best horror games on the Nintendo Switch, bearing in mind of course, Halloween falls in this week. Now the Switch actually has quite a decent repertoire of horror games on it so far, although there are some noticeable absences such as the Resident Evil 2 remake, Resident Evil 7, although 7 did get a release via a streaming service exclusively in Japan, and there's no Fatal Frame game on it so far, but even with that in mind, there are some very decent games. So I'm going to go through 10 of the best, and there'll be some honourable mentions at the end, so please do make sure to hang around for those. Okay, let's get started. First up then is a game called Little Nightmares. Now this is a puzzle platformer with quite a disturbing theme where you play as a small child named Six as they try to escape the horror of a place called The Moor. It has some quite chilling imagery at times and it looks like something that Tim Burton would have made in the late 80s or early 90s. Plus this Switch edition is a complete edition with all previous DLC included as part of the deal. You can pick this game up for fairly cheap physically these days, plus there is a sequel coming next year as well that's already been confirmed as having a Switch release. Next game then is Friday the 13th the video game. Now this is an asymmetric online multiplayer game where you either play as Jason Voorhees trying to kill a bunch of camp counsellors or you play as one of the aforementioned counsellors trying to escape. Whilst this game is certainly not perfect and it very much relies on its online community staying strong, there is something undeniably creepy about being the camp counsellor and spotting Jason and having to run away or hiding in a cupboard or under the bed whilst he searches the cabin that you are in. And this is the part of the game I actually prefer over being Jason himself. There is another game on the Switch very similar to this called Dead by Daylight, which some people do prefer. And whilst I can certainly see that some gameplay elements are better in Dead by Daylight, you just cannot beat playing as an established character. Dead by Daylight does have the option to purchase some DLC that sees you being able to play as characters such as Michael Myers, but it is additional DLC that you do have to pay for, so just bear that in mind. The third game then, and remember these are in no particular order, is Among the Sleep. Now this sees you playing as an infant looking for your mother whilst holding onto your teddy bear for protection and light as you go. Now the creepy thing about this game is that you have the aspect of being a child and all the things that a child would naturally find scary anyway, such as the noise of the washing machine at night, but then you have the fact that there's a lot more going on than just that as the game progresses. It's quite a clever premise to give you a protagonist to play as that is just so underpowered and completely helpless. And again, the physical version of this does go for relatively cheap now. Next up then we have the Resident Evil games which I'm going to bunch all together into one slot otherwise they take over the whole list. Now on the Switch so far you have Resident Evil 0, 1, 4 and 5 and 6 have just released this week plus you have Resident Evil Revelations 1 and 2 as well. I think that's all of it. Whilst I know of those ones available 4 has a lot of support as being one of the best me personally I prefer the remake of the first game which is the one available on the Switch it's the HD remaster and the remake of this game was actually the sole reason that I bought a GameCube back in the day. On the day that the Resident Evil remake released, I went out and bought myself a bundle from HMV of that game and a GameCube. It's an absolutely classic game that I think still holds up very well to this day. Of those ones available, I'd also personally recommend Zero, which I know divides some fans, but I think it's a great game, and the first Revelations game, which especially for the first part of the game on the abandoned ship is absolutely brilliant and really goes back to the roots of what Resident Evil was originally about. Next game then was a game that I wasn't expecting to feature any horror elements at all when I got it for my birthday from my wife and it's a game called Bendy and the Ink Machine. Now this is a first person survival horror game where you play as an artist that's returning to the place of his previous work at an animation studio where there's been some strange goings on. The visuals are reminiscent of the art style used in the 20s and 30s using that rubber hosing technique seen in games like Cuphead as well and this game just has a really creepy atmosphere about it, it's very cleverly done. I'd highly recommend this game, it's got a very unique premise and although we've seen this gameplay style in horror games a few times before, this one does it very well. Now 
a bit of a change of pace for the next game, it's called The Last Door and it's a psychological horror point and click game. I believe it came out originally on mobile in episodic form, but this Switch version has all 8 episodes included for the base price. Set in Victorian times, it sees you trying to solve an age-old mystery of a mysterious being known as the Veil that has haunted a set of friends since their childhood. I read that it was inspired by the works of Edgar Allan Poe and H.P. Lovecraft, but it had a strange feeling of Stephen King's it around it, just in regards to having to face a fear or a demon from your childhood. Okay, one of the more established or better known horror games on the Switch now, or series I should say, and that's the Outlast games. You have Outlast 1 and 2 available, although one also comes with some DLC included called Whistleblower. Now the Outlast games are survival horror games played from a first person perspective where you are completely defenseless and must hide from enemies in order to stay alive. You also need to use your video recorder as a source of light and find batteries to keep it stocked so you can see what's going on. Now of the two games, I must admit I prefer the first Outlast. I like the dark and dingy setting, the enclosed spaces of the asylum that you are in. And of the whole series, my favourite part is actually the DLC, the Whistleblower DLC, which is probably the scariest and most intense of all of them. I did enjoy Outlast 2, but I felt that moving it to an outdoor setting, albeit it's still fairly enclosed, just harmed the game a little bit for me. And all of them do suffer slightly from becoming a bit repetitive once you know what's out there but I think you can say that of a lot of horror games to be fair, and movies for that matter. All in all, you can't go wrong with these games, they are absolutely terrifying. Next up we have the Yomawari Long Night Collection, which includes Yomawari Night Alone and its sequel Yomawari Midnight Shadows. Now these are again survival horror games, this time set on an isometric plane and have quite a cutesy art style and that juxtaposition between cute and terrifying is actually quite unsettling and works very well. The premise of both games is you being alone and having to find someone, your sister in the first game and your friend in the second, whilst all manner of monsters are outside in the streets. It uses a heartbeat system to show you when a monster is close and you also have a torch or a flashlight that you must use to see your way around and keep enemies away from you. These are very interesting and quite creepy games and getting two for the price of one is a good deal. Layers of Fear is the next game on the list, and again this is a, a walking simulator come survival horror game that sees you moving through a mansion whilst the story unfolds as you go and as you find more clues. But for my money, this is the game that has done it best so far. Now I'm sure there'll be some people that disagree with that and that's fair enough, but I can honestly say no other game has creeped me out as much on the Switch as this one has. Maybe it's down to the fact that I played it in handheld mode and it has quite an interesting feature where the layout of the mansion will suddenly change as you turn around and seeing that so close to your face playing in handheld mode was incredibly effective. I also just really enjoyed the story and I like the fact that it was slower paced than some of the other games, you weren't running for cover every two minutes and for me this meant that the game didn't show its hand too early, it just kept a constant creepy atmosphere. The final game I'm going to mention, I thought it was only fair to put this one last as you could argue that it was the game that inspired a lot of the others on this list and that is the Amnesia Collection. This includes Amnesia The Dark Descent, a short expansion called Amnesia Justine and the sequel Amnesia A Machine For Pigs. This is again a first person survival horror game but came before the likes of Outlast and Layers of Fear and the first one is set in a castle where you wake up with Amnesia of course with a letter from yourself telling you that you must go into the depths of the castle and kill the Baron Alexander. It also tells you that you are being chased by a mysterious shadow. Gameplay wise it will have you hiding from enemies and seeing all manner of creepy imagery but the thing that really creeped me out about this one was the music or lack thereof. I mean it uses ambient sounds but some of them are absolutely hideous. There's this bizarre clicking noise that just keeps going and it almost enters your psyche as you play. It's very hard to describe but again incredibly well done. All three games on here are also quite different albeit they use the same gameplay style. The first one will see you running away from enemies more. The Justine expansion has you starting again from the very beginning if you die, whereas the sequel A Machine for Pigs plays at a slightly slower pace. You could say that this is the granddaddy of the modern survival horror game and it's great to have it on the Switch. 
So that's the end of my list. I'm just going to throw some honourable mentions out there. First of all, some that I've played myself. You have games like Goisha, Darkwood, Detention, The Coma Uncut, and the aforementioned Dead by Daylight, which are all good games. Then some that I've not played myself, but have been recommended to me, so please do bear that in mind. But they are Fantaruk, Viviette, Welcome to Hanwell, and Deathmark. If you're not quite ready for Halloween to be over yet and you want another video with a horror theme, please do check out my documentary of the video game Night Trap. I'll put the link to it in the pinned comment. And just a big thank you to all of you for watching our videos. One last thanks before I go to all of our Patreons who help make this channel possible. Your support is very much appreciated. If you would like to join them and become a patron of the channel, the links are all down below. And until next time, take care, happy Halloween and happy gaming.